Hi, good afternoon everyone. Um, so basically what we're trying to do is we're actually addressing the problem of pilots uh, plan but with a different twist, right? So what is exactly the best way to open up transparency with regards to overall flight safety? So can I have a show of hands here? How many of you two today still believe that when you bought a flight, there's a chance that you might actually die? <laughs> yeah, so that was actually the inspiration behind the idea because all five of us actually felt the same way. So the five of us actually firmly believe that traveling should always, always be a hassle-free experience for every passenger. However, like I said earlier, and I think all of you agree, that anxiety continues to be associated with the concept of flying. And today, um, based on latest figures, there are actually 20.8 million people that are actually facing the same fear as all of us seated here today, in the US alone. And pilots too. So we found out that travel continues to be consistent over time, and here are some data sets that we've actually managed to pull out, which are the top five flights um, in the US alone. Since for the interest of the hackathon, we had a uh, limited time, so we focused on the US alone to assess the flight data. And we realized that there was an opportunity for us to change some ways in which flight data paths were being analyzed. So the current solutions out there is there's actually a real-time tracking provided by various service providers, many apps out there, many resources, but they're all highly fragmented, and at the same time, real-time tracking information happens to only be live during the flight itself. The second issue that we realized was that real-time tracking now uh, only allows um, one to have an understanding of what an aircraft is flying over, but there is no overall risk assessment of that particular flight path. So what was the solution? So introducing Genie, an interactive dashboard that provides an overall risk and survival assessment across one selected flight before he or she departs. So current flight search methods um, basically only compare prices, departure arrival timings, duration, and the type of airlines. But what if we could go one level deeper? So in this demo itself, it's pretty much um, an overall risk assessment of each individual flight that we pull out. So basically, what happens if, say for example, you're on a flight from New York City right now to like San Francisco, what happens is based on a variety of factors that we analyze, we can clearly see how the path changes color depending on um, which part of the um, island it's going across. So if you can see early in the flight, there are actually a lot of green areas. That's where it's actually flying over water bodies. Um, the team actually came to a conclusion that water bodies, we did some research as well, that water bodies actually have uh, lower so-called risk assessment in a way because when a plane crashes, it gets submerged essentially. So you can see how like, it's live in a sense where at every single point of time, it basically analyzes the terrain below the aeroplane and then gives an overall risk assessment. So the criteria that we actually used for this demo was actually pretty simple for the hackathon. So it's based on four factors, terrain analysis, population density, the ecosystem, and the overall urban value. So these are the essential technical specifications that we actually use in the demo. Uh, feel free to ask questions about that later. Uh, so key impacts, we really want to change the way we look at overall airline safety from the perspective of the airlines themselves, motivate them to actually um, so-called provide the safest route for all their consumers, and at the same time change the way we travel. We want to make sure that you guys down here in the audience don't ask that question whereby you keep asking yourself, will I die on this flight? We want to remove that thought from your head. So moving forward, we want to provide power to the people. We want to crowdsource some ideas that you guys have, some flights that you want to track, and collaborate with airlines, and yeah, continue to provide a data-focused approach, because this is what it's all about. Yep, that's all. Thank you. Uh, there was one thing I did not notice as a criteria you guys were looking at. It's like chances of being dragged off the airplane by staff. <laughs> I, I just think that that's something that should be included. That's sorry, chance. United. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. That was funny. Um, yeah, so I, I guess uh, I'd, in a future iteration, I'd love to see this take the next step. And I know we kind of talked about that when you guys were working on this. Um, 
This, so the, the FAA very clearly defines flight paths that, that planes take, and that's based on minimizing the risk of collision, among other things. Um, I would love to see this as kind of a tool to help the FAA uh, reduce the risk of these flights and, and kind of in a collaborative effort, but also taking into account the fact that um, rerouting a flight might cost fuel and have a, a, a climate impact as well. So finding a way to balance the short-term benefit of landing in water versus the long-term benefit of dumping a whole bunch more methane and CO2 in the air. Um, but I love it. This is a great first step. And I, I, I really love that it's a public-facing site that puts that information out there because that puts market pressure on companies to adjust to, to what consumers want. So. Yeah, I, so you guys have on number two potential to collaborate with airlines. I'm just wondering, like, what you think the airline's incentive would be to collaborate, you know, when you're, you're creating very, you know, a very public display of, you know, them and their routes being dangerous. Um, yeah. One of the reasons that you can, one of the ways in which you can collaborate with an airline um, would be for the marketing profile, like you said earlier, um, by making it public like that and also by making it known like that, they can reroute their routes, go over less populated areas, less dense areas, um, which was, would discourage things like terrorism, fear, and other things like that. Okay. Other things we can collaborate with, um, which I, we discussed earlier, um, is with potentially oil tankers, uh, oil lines, um, cargo ships, things like that. anything carrier reeling a, a dangerous cargo yeah. could be potentially redirected using this technology. And real quick, and then I'll pass it on, sorry. Um, you guys said that you ultimately settled on a set of like assumptions in order to determine what, what indicated like danger. Uh, could you guys just talk a little bit about what, what caused you guys to reach those, those assumptions? Um, and maybe where you think that those assumptions still need to be tested and validated? Um, so the three that we pretty much covered um, was population density, um, the ecology in the area, so forest versus desert, um, and then the value of the structures in that building, which is the urban value. Um, so a city versus a small farm. Um, and those three things pretty much go into how much damage would come down to the uh, beneath area of the crash site, and also potentially to the company that now has to pay for that and to some degree. Um, and it, they're very, very wide-based vectors. So it pretty much covers all three areas of what you really could count and quantify. Uh, it's a really, really cool um, and interesting uh, concept that you've developed here. Uh, so in the challenge uh, design, you know, one of the, the ideas that we asked for was like some kind of educational component to teach people like what they're going over. And it's a really awesome take on it. Um, given your um, fascination or, or uh, interest in sort of morbidity. I think it'd be really cool <laughs> if you could. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, the, the, there's the, the changing patterns of, of risks associated with where you're flying over. It'd be great if you could kind of integrate, oh, if it's a water body, just give a little bit more geographic information or a little bit more information about kind of why the risk goes up and down. That'd be really interesting for people who are kind of using the app as well. So that was just my comment, but it's really great. It's like on mass over throughout the route. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. And you could always add, you know, more data sources and more vectors to your data yeah. set to give to them to calculate your risk ass assessment based off of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, any, any kind of like them, something that makes it a little more interactive, gets people to learn a little bit more about what they're going over would be, would be really cool. But yeah, but it's a great, really fun <laughs> application. Okay, so I have a million comments. I'm going to try to say them all really <laughs> fast because I know we don't have a ton of time. Um, I love this. I think this is a real product. I think you could actually make a lot of money with this. Um, and, and my first piece of advice with that is look at Waze, uh, the app that was bought by Google. Um, and uh, that, that is absolutely a way to actually really make money with this. Don't partner with any airlines. Be the user and customer focused person uh, because, and let people do user input. If I'm on a plane and I'm experiencing turbulence, I'm going to push a button on your app and say, I'm experiencing turbulence, this sucks, right? So, you know, and, and same overall, like all around with the experience of flying. Um, the other thing I'm going to caution with is the, uh, the map, like the real-time thing. Uh, in terms of reducing anxiety, if I were looking at that, I would have real-time anxiety. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, oh my god, I'm in the red. I'm in the red. Okay, I'm in the green. Okay, I'm in the green. Oh my god, I'm in the red. I'm in the red. You know, that, that's, you're, 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 you're recreating last year's election uh, <laughs> with that New York Times interactive thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love it overall, all around. And the final thought I have, which bringing it back to NASA again, 
This could be used for mission planning on other planets. If I have a, if I have a drone or if I have something that's driving or flying over a, an area and you're doing geographic risk assessment, you know, if there's a feature that may be more risky or less risky, you're going to have to obviously recalculate for other atmospheres and other gravities and that kind of thing, but mission planning, this is a great tool for that. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.